Hey everyone, welcome again to OCDBA, OCD Visual Advocates YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining. You are all amazing and awesome. And I am Matthew Bannister, grassroots advocate with the IOCDF. I'm very passionate about that. And joining with me is the one and only, amazing, the one and, and Carol Edwards. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to give a good intro, everyone, because Carol know. is an amazing, amazing woman. She is a former CBT therapist and a IOCD advocate, and she is the author of Address Staring OCD. And also, you can download that on Amazon Kindle, and you can buy it on Amazon. You can also buy Carol's other books on Amazon and Amazon Kindle. And also, okay. Carol has got a website of OCDWriter.com. Is that correct, Carol? Yeah, that's right. Yes. So you can always check Carol's resources on there. So today we're going to talk about the similarity and differences that we believe with somatic obsessions and visual thoracic OCD. And I will let you take it away, Carol. Uh, we will start with, is visual thoracic OCD a somatic obsession? Right, so um, when I was first asked, asked this question, I thought this would um, further question whether or not people with visual Tourette OCD are obsessively preoccupied with premonitory sensations associated with visual tics and the reasons they have them. In addition, there would be a fear consequence. For example, what if this sensation means I have something wrong with my visual reflexes? If I do, I might need, need medical treatment. And if I have to have treatment, I'm scared I could lose my sight if it goes wrong. So in this case, the obsession would be about VTO as a medical problem and worrying about what is wrong with them and the outcome of that. Yeah, that sounds really, really good. Because like you say, with um, as we know, a somatic obsession is where you feel that, like I say, with your breathing or your blinking, uh, you're highly hyper focused on that. So, like I say, with breathing, for um, if I had somatic obsessions, um, I would make sure that I'm breathing like in, in an equal way. Like I'm breathing that, I make sure that I know that I'm breathing the right amount of air so that I don't stop breathing. I know that I'm okay with that. And also that I won't develop anything like, say, like a, a brain cancer or any other medical issues that breathing can happen. That's right, yeah. 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 Uh, and like I say, with uh, blinking as well, I want to make sure that when I'm at, let's say I've become hyper focused again with blinking, um, obviously it can be very distressing. So now it's like during my day, I always have to make sure that I'm blinking the correct amount of times or to make sure that I'm, it feels right. So that, let's say, for example, I'm, I will go blind um, with that um, as a somatic sensation, for example. Uh, and it, like I say, it can just be very distressing, can't, can't it? Yeah, but I noticed that you had a consequence there. Um, yes, yeah. Like I say, you, you're blinking. frightened. Yeah. yeah, like I say, you can be frightened that you can uh, go blind if you yeah. you don't monitor your blinking. Like I say, you no longer see it as like an automatic sensation. Like mm -hmm. as we know, we're blinking, obviously everyone does it and it's a normal thing. But obviously somatic obsessions, when you become hyper aware of it, Yeah. You like you have to be focused to keep doing it. You can't stop. Like you're frightened if you stop monitoring your blinking, then the worst the case scenario, like say if this could happen, that you're frightened, go blind. Yeah, and that's where you, you know, want to do a compulsion to get yeah. rid of that consequence and reduce anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. Because um, going on from what what I've just said, um, su suppose someone is aware of the premonitory urge to stare, but are more preoccupied with the consequence of staring automatically. For example, worrying about staring at people's private regions, getting caught and called a, a, a creep. Um, in this instance, their obsession would be about the act of staring and the resultant outcome. So a compulsion might be to look down to avoid staring. So similar to what you've just said with the blinking. Yeah, like, like you say, um, you're focusing basically with BTO is where your eyes are, where your vision is that's where your hyper focus and sensation will be. So like I say, with a fear consequence of this is like, like I say, you'd be called the worst thing by someone else, so it can hurt your social reputation. So like I say, being called a deviant creep or a pervert. 
Yeah. Um, so you, like I say, your compulsion would be to monitor where you are looking. So basically I'll be looking down. I'd be like looking towards the desk. I'd be looking up um, anywhere apart from a human person. And that yeah. would be my compulsion. That would be yeah. my hyper awareness with this. And as well, um, for monitoring, it's like you will monitor as well everyone around you. So you become so hyper vigilant, so hyper aware of everything. And every time someone, let's say, would move, fidget, um, you will then have that um, hyper focus awareness where yeah. the consequences you would fear to react to that, like if you like say you wanted to check or you didn't want to check let's say for example set correctly and it happens anyway because you don't have that control it's involuntary um that's your fear consequence again would be i'm going to be called a deviant basically yeah yeah so this is a somatic awareness but yeah that the fear is the the environment um and what will happen if if you stare yes yeah it's the consequence yeah. like i say of the uh, more of the OCD have you will it's yeah. like you say that's the that's what's building up inside you it's that anxiety that keeps building on it's all of the obsessions and ruminations in your mind of the mm. feared outcome then you yeah. are assessing it physically yeah of a, a feared outcome with this physically yeah yeah I'd agree with that um but, but also it's like people have asked whether the primary urge to the tip comes from the brain similar to uh, primary urges in Tourette syndrome what do you think with that Carol um well I was going to look at that a bit later down later okay. on that's fine um because I think we could look at um more about somatic ob uh, obsessions to get a, a better idea yeah sure um yeah so I'll go into that a little bit um and then I think this you know we'll kind of come to that with the brain um yeah. So yeah, looking um, more at somatic obsessions. Um, somatic obsessions are, are also called sensory motor or body focus obsessions because they all relate to hyper awareness of automatic bodily activities, like we just talked about, you know, such as uh, breathing and blinking. So for example, some people might repeatedly monitor the evenness of their breath, which is you, what you've just been talking about, yeah. and then regulate it so it feels just right. When people control their breathing this way, it is a compulsion to check it's consistent because they fear they won't cope if it isn't. Or they might worry that if their breathing isn't even or have a regular beat, then, um, oh no, sorry, not regular beat, that's to do with the heart, um, uh, uh, rhythm and then something could be medically wrong with them. That, that's what they would worry about. So um, a further imagined consequence might be that the doctor will give them bad news. Yeah, that they think that there is actually something severely wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. That That is the somatic obsession. So we're actually talking about VTO at yeah. the moment. So that's why um, they would think as well, as well, sorry, Carol, um, like, they would have to breathe evenly so that they believe that let's say that severe consequence the doctor might say won't happen that that's a fair consequence that yeah yeah the doctor yeah, sorry. That some, <laughs> something wrong okay. yeah okay <laughs> so now if we go back to the person worried about staring and the outcome of that so recall that that you know they might look down to avoid um staring so now ask are they are they focusing on their eyes and monitoring the premonitory sensation when they look down, similar to the person checking their breathing. In other words, are they looking down and obsessing there is something medically wrong with their eyes? Or are they more, more focused on the outcome of staring if they look up? We have just talked about this really, I'm kind yeah, of repeating it, but yeah, that's okay. That's okay. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it, it could also be a combination of both. So whatever the case, VTO appears to have a body focused or somatic component because there is some attention on the eyes. But we'll go more into that, you know, um, following the next questions. Yeah, um, yeah, you said it really well that obviously because we have no fear consequences, like say for us physically, like when you're looking down, for example, I don't, th I don't think that when I do that, uh, my eyes are gonna be protected, let's say for physical, anything physical, let's say I'm protecting my eyes from um, anything that could en enter them, I don't know, for example, um, like dust, for example, in that moment. 
um, that the, the, even if there was, I would that would still not be my most feared outcome. It would be where obviously I would be feared more of the the actual obsessional outcome with being caught, and yeah. that's why I'm doing it. It is like you say more of a men, like I say it's a m- very much more obsessional rumination. And like I said, the consequence would be the, yeah, to be caught and be called, like say, the worst things that say social, and it can affect my social reputation. That's yeah. what I'm caring about more than, let's say, how my eyes are, how, how what am I focusing on with like how healthy they are. For, for example, um, I'm like, say, I'm more concentrated on the beard outcome with uh, things yeah. like Yeah, because I don't know about you, Matthew, but for me, I, I automatically hide my eyes, or I did when it was really bad. But I wasn't really conscious of hiding my eyes. I was conscious of what will happen if someone sees me staring. So kind of hiding away from that, um, but not not concentrating on the eyes as what we're talking about. Yes, 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 it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. We're more yeah. concentrating on uh, the feared outcome um, and the mental aspects more than, like I say, concentrating on constantly on the physical nature of, of uh, my eyes for example yeah yeah, yeah. if that makes sense <laughs> well it, it does it does to me because yeah. that, that that's how I feel it I mean other people might uh, feel it differently um we're, you know it's it, it's the same yeah problem but some people um experience it differently than it's others like, yeah it's a um it's a compulsion and it's a defensive mechanism for us have you will yeah um obviously we our defense mechanism would be to look away for that reassurance knowing that obviously when we look somewhere we're not going to get that feared outcome mm. but we know that with our eyes for example um nothing bad is going to happen with our eyes we're not going to have anything severe like say i might lose sight or anything like that i'm not thinking that i'm no, thinking literally right. of the um feared consequence and obsession uh with my reputation same as me yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, okay. Um, so what I was saying before as well, um, people have asked whether the premonitory urge to tick comes from the brain, similar to premonitory urges in Tourette's syndrome. What would you think to that, Carol? So when I had this question, I, I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to answer this the best I can, um, because obviously I'm, I'm not a doctor or a neuroscientist or yeah, same for whatever. Me. Yeah, um, we're both advocates, so, aren't we? So. Yeah, and we can go on personal experience. Um, yeah. So, you know, well, while the name visual tick in VTO makes it sound as though it's purely somatic, it's much more complex than that. For example, I'll, I'll go with research, you know, suggests that Tourette's OCD ticks are similar to, um, similar to the ticks in Tourette's syndrome. Um, so we would assume like all motor tics, that visual ones in VTO are triggered by an intense impulse in the brain's nerve cells. This impulse eventually travels down to the re- relevant muscles, causing them to contract and produce the tick. Yes. And I don't know about you, Matthew, but that's how it feels for me. Yeah, it's same for me as well. It's such it's a split like, second. It is, yeah. Um, it's where that it becomes, in, it's like I say, it's an involuntary uncontrollable. So we're not, let's say, monitoring, trying to control it from suppressing it. It can just happen uh, it, it, when you feel in the most, let's say, when you're feeling the FFF, the fight, flight, freeze response, when it's really triggering at its highest. And um, that's when it can happen. It's like, yeah, that's what the, our, like I say, our brain signals mm-hmm. are giving us. And we're just in a state of panic. It's like it's a mixed message. Um, obviously, if we don't want to do it, but it keeps happening. Yeah. The only time, like you say, we can really maybe call it any, like so, related to somaticness is when, let's say we're talking to someone right now, like so I'm talking to you, and I'm about to say I'm really feeling the FFF right now. I'm feeling super anxious, and I'm saying, don't stare, don't look, don't stare. Um, that's when the FFF really kicks up and I'm feeling seriously anxious. That's when I can start to feel an overwhelming sensation of it building up. So basically I would feel the urge that is going to happen. I don't want it to happen, mm. but it feels like it's telling me you've got no control. I need to come out. I need to come out and, yeah. and, and do this. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's how I don't have, like, say, the. that's the only way I can really feel the monetary exposure with somaticness related mm. to this 
uh, from that because you can monitor that feeling like you know it's coming on you can sense it you can feel it yeah um, but at the same time you can't control it it can it just happens because you're in such a panicking situation it happens yeah. um that's the way I can like say describe with that um I can identify with that Matthew yeah yeah um and obviously again it's the same feared consequence it's not with uh, anything like, is there something wrong with my eyes? Is it why, is it because I might have like, say maybe I'm going cross-eyed, why does it keep happening like that? Um, it's nothing to do with that. You, It's nothing to do with like, say where you're focusing and where you are looking. It's happening because it's out of sheer panic and anxiety. So I would say it's more of an, like say more of the general OCD than it is with more yeah. of a somatic obsession where you feel like, yeah. A, you, you know you can let's say you have to do a certain tick maybe to feel um that you will get a certain consequence for example um like theoretically let's say if my eyes were just focused on someone and I'm talking to them normally now I have the fear that if I don't do the simulated tick or I don't look diagonally left or diagonally right I'm afraid that my eyes will just stay still and then my eyes, were, I can't move my eyes. They become, have you say, paralyzed or frozen. I'm monitoring my eyes. So I'm making sure now that I'm trying to like say, con have control of my eye movement. I know I've got control of it. So I can like make sure I can keep looking around with my eyes. I know that I'm okay. And that would be, let's say, I would think maybe more of a somatic feature with this. Does that, does that feel conscious? Are you conscious of that, would you say? When um, when when you say that I'm let's, um, looking straight ahead and that I'm frightened that my eyes would freeze, like would be proud. Yes, I would be conscious. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Because um, obviously I'm I'm checking that I'm moving my eyes to check that they are I can still move them okay. They're not just yeah. stuck. Or like say I'm frightened I might go cross-eyed, for example. I know that when I do that and we go back to looking at someone, I'm in control. I'm okay. Um, that's what I can. That's what my opinion is. Um, mm. Because obviously with VTO, it is for me and you, Carol, like you say, it is more of, like you say, the OCD, general OCD spectrum, where it is, it is rumination obsessions and yeah. fear of the worst case scenario. Yeah, so it, it can kind of see a little bit of magical thinking in there as well, thinking that your eyes yes. will stay a certain way. Yes. But you can also see the somatic sensation there because there is some focus on the eyes. Yeah, because you're controlling where your eyeball movement is going. Right? Mm. you're still heavily focused on that like again for example like with the tick if it keeps happening I might think am I going cross-eyed is it because I can't because I might be going cross-eyed with that every time I do a tick I'm going cross-eyed so maybe I'm monitoring thinking I'm going cross-eyed that's why it keeps happening I don't know if that could go into a somatic I would um, think so because that's where, well. that, that, that's where your, your awareness is yeah on your eyes yeah yeah because like as well um I've also, like, people with somatic can think, you know, with the nose, for example, uh, someone can, let's say, with somatic OCD, they can keep seeing their nose. Let's say if someone has quite a big nose, like a beak, <laughs> and it's right there, and you can, let's say, eventually you start noticing your nose when you talk to someone, and you become really irritated by that. They would become so irritated, like, why do I keep noticing my nose? Why is this, why is this still like I can see it in my eye vision? I just want to talk to someone normally. I don't yeah. want to keep concentrating on that. It's because, like I say, the brain's rejecting it. It's basically saying that I don't want it to happen. I don't want to keep noticing it. And that's when you keep giving it more value. You keep noticing your nose then. It's going to keep giving you more stress. As we know, though, through like with ERP, um, let's say, yeah, I can still notice my nose. But you know what? I'm still going to talk to someone and accept it being there because it's always been there. I'm just going to sit with that discomfort and still talk to someone. And eventually, it, hopefully, it will pass. It will just pass. Your mind will then yeah, stop rejecting right. that thought. And then you can just be, I'm okay with that now. And it becomes less significant. You become less obsessed about it. You don't think about it anymore. It doesn't become no longer a distress. Uh, and you could even say that with uh, with breathing, like I say, that eventually with ERP, you can start talking to someone and just try and keep your mind off the obsession with, let's say, trying to breathe evenly to make sure that you know you're breathing okay. Um, you just keep talking to someone else to keep, uh, say, with that distraction so that, and I'm talking to someone, my body's got to automatically breathe for me. It's mm. a... A survival response. Your body like a mindful anything. distraction. So yeah, that we're still, still aware that it's there yeah. and you're okay and leaving it there. You're yes. doing a mindful distraction with yes. something else. Yeah. That's it, yes. Not, not and then, it. Yeah, and then you can tell yourself, well, I was just been talking to someone then and I was completely okay. I'm fine. 
And it's like, then you can keep adding that, let's say that ERP hierarchy to that, to where that you can use that everywhere you go. So then obviously the obsession with this will um, eventually will just um, fade away. You can yeah. just basically reclaim your life back to where you're not obsessively thinking about your breathing. You just accept that discomfort yeah. there. Sometimes if it, even it does come up saying, well, I'm, maybe, maybe not, I might stop breathing. I might, uh, and then maybe I might breathe okay still. And you just have to lean to that uncertainty and uh, and keep reaching towards your values. Yeah, that sounds good. So I just talked about the brain. Um, yes. And then following that, like, so on, on that basis, um, the somatic nature of the tick is not in question. There is no, da- there is no doubt there. Um, so in other words, experiencing a premonitory edge is somatic. Uh, but the obsession with staring makes it a unique form of Tourette's or CD. Yes. So in other words, first it relates to a bodily function, especially as distinct from the mind. So from this perspective, you might say a person feels a somatic sensation or the premonitory edge um, before releasing a visual tick just noted. But it doesn't end there. And we can go into that in a minute. I'll let you... Yeah. Um, go into that a little bit if you if, if you want to if not uh, yeah on. you're right i mean like you say it, the somatic again like is, um with the bto um you feel it coming on so basically you you, you like you see with like say with the anxiety that does build um with like say with the fff you do feel it like say coming on to you it's like a really strong hole all of a sudden where you are, where you, your eyes you, you, you know you're gonna you're like basically you're so frightened that all of it eventually you're gonna start losing control but you can feel yeah. that tension in your eyes with the sheer anxiety of like say your obsessions like you just feel it building like that's how yeah. i felt with it anyway i did when mine was bad and um, but but now i don't i don't feel any anxiety from staring now and this is why i think that you know there is this tick and um, because you just kind of automatically look yeah um but obviously for me there's no anxiety now but there used to be i think yeah. once you lose that anxiety it doesn't matter whether you do or you don't it kind of just happens and you just walk on or whatever you know, find a way to do it um as jonathan grayson says the sneak peek and feel okay about it yeah that's it you've become accepted of it um because with this as well like with someone without bto um it can it just happens anyway like we're all human beings we're all curious creatures so when you notice someone like say when you're looking at them it can happen but you have no value from it this is the thing we need to take from it yeah that's take right. no value yeah. from it yeah. it's just basically an observation something could be some you know wearing something that's quite stand out for example mm. it's just an observation everyone does it and yeah. it we just for a split second like you say and that's the thing when you no longer have that anxiety don't let's say ruminate and um discourage yourself and really put yourself in that situation that you become in a depressive state about it and you're blaming yourself it is human nature it is yeah. like i say a normal response and um, just that obviously with us it's just where like i say we are still this could relate again with somatic obsession um we are more hyper aware of things that say the more anxious we become but the less anxious we become, then the less hyper aware we are. But like you say again, Carol, that that tick can still happen. It basically it won't be way. Okay, it, it's just like completely, completely faced forever. It, we're just normal human beings, like say, uh, and it's just more of curiosity. So we're not doing it non-stop. We're not like say doing the tick like every um, three, four, five seconds. Like you know, every again, again and again and again. Mm-hmm. As you could do when you feel with this, yeah, when you're feeling super anxious, it could just be once and then that's it. And that's like yeah, a normal true. response. That's what people do yeah. uh, without even realising, but they just don't take no value from it. Mm. And that's the same that, with us. Yeah, that, that's the same as me as well. Just just now and again, it might happen. Um, yeah. but I don't think anything of it anymore. So, yeah, I mean, just... obviously, if you're in a smaller space, you know, there's people around. Um, there, are, there are times when I'm... A, a bit more conscious and I get that premonitory edge and I think to stare but again I don't feel anxious I just wait for the sneak peek I am like Jonathan Grayson talks about yeah and that sneak- that relieves that tension then and you're yeah. not avoiding because you, what we don't want to do is avoid because then that, yeah. that'll feed into it yeah that's it and then it makes it worse um yeah. yeah it's like same with me in a way it's like um 
let's say when I'm doing an exposure and I'm doing something value driven and that really takes away the anxiety because I'm enjoying what I'm doing that day. And that's when the tick can become um, very, uh, it doesn't happen very much at all. And for me as well, like when I don't really think, feel anxious whatsoever, like I say, it can just be very, very, very minimal. Basically, even mm. sometimes that it actually might not happen. Um, but then other times, like you say, it can happen every once in a while. But like I say, I'm mm. okay with that because uh, I don't beat myself up anymore. Because like I say, it's a sneak peek. It's um, a subtle glance and that's it. That's yeah. all it is. It take right. no value from it. It's just a yeah. normal curiosity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're happy, yeah, I <laughs> So I, I was just saying it doesn't end there, you know, yeah. when, uh, you know, um, what did I say? So from this perspective, you might say a person feels a somatic sensation or, the, you know, the, the urge before releasing a visual tick just noted, but I said it doesn't end there. So what I was going to say next is, let's put it this way. Suppose a person began experiencing blurred vision. Yeah. Um, this is kind of repeated, but it, it, it doesn't really matter because it's, it's getting the point across that we need, we want to get across. Um, so suppose a, a person began experiencing blurred vision. Now imagine the person's focus is on the cause of the blurred sight. Despite undergoing numerous medical tests that revealed no specific reason for their symptoms, they continued to focus on it, fearing that they had a brain tumour and the doctors got it wrong. In this case, the somatic obsession associated with the eyes and blurred vision has a consequence, which is the fear of the outcome of developing a tumour and facing surgery or being given a short time to live. The point is that the problem is entirely somatic because it relates to the body, suggesting to the person something could be medically wrong with them and fearing the worst if there is. So... Anything to say on that before I move uh, No, no, I totally agree. Like you say with the blur vision, like you would with somatic, like so when you concentrate on it, um, you think that like, why am I keep having blurred vision? Um, is like you say, do I have a brain tumor? Do I have anything else? Let's like, say that could be really severely wrong with me. Um, is that the reason why? And then that's with like said, so, when like so when you're concentrating on that, it's like you keep obsessing about if I'm saying that right. Um, whereas maybe, like I see, you said the doctors didn't say anything, there's nothing medically wrong with you, but you're still yeah. having that blurred vision. So wouldn't that person maybe think, should I try with the opticians and maybe see what they say yeah. Yeah. and to see them? Obviously, you might have just something generally wrong with your eyesight, maybe a long sight, maybe a short sighted. And that's why you keep having your blurred vision. Does it, it doesn't mean that you're going to develop a brain tumour or brain cancer, uh, even towards blindness, maybe. Um, you just have that, you know. You have you maybe either long sighted or short sightedness. Um, maybe even I know I talk about blindness, but like I say, even if you develop a cataract, but at least you can still see. Even though it might be tunnel vision, but you still have sight. Doesn't mean you're going to go blind. And obviously there is surgery out there. Maybe if you want to, anyone wants to go down that route, that can help with that too. To you know have a chance of regaining your full sight again. But it doesn't mean that you could develop a brain tumor like you said, Carol. It doesn't mean you no. could develop anything. Because let's say that's going to be lifelong uh, you know terminal illness no that's their feared yeah. consequence you know yeah. they've got an obsession with their sight and yeah. you know so they're thinking you know this what does this blurred vision mean do they really have blurred vision because it's an obsession yeah. um maybe they don't but medically there's nothing wrong yeah they just um, believe that. but yeah. they keep focusing on have I or have you know what is wrong with me and like yep. you said they might go to the opposition they might go somewhere else but that's all checking 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 you know and then it feeds into that obsession yeah it's like the reassurance isn't it um yeah. you can see like the compulsion is the reassurance that you're checking non-stop uh until you get that reassurance and that could be very debilitating because you could be like going to the doctors like every single week and yeah. that could and on this totally different conversation I'll very quickly that could go into health anxiety as well like you know a health OCD right, yeah. uh, with that situation and you just keep checking with the doctors and like when you check with the doctors and they say you've got nothing wrong with you medically that's like oh I feel good I feel better I have that temporary relief I know I'm okay but then again like you say when you keep concentrating oh I'm still noticing it I need to go back to the doctors to make sure yeah um it's yeah. like I'll be very brief uh quick everyone as well like I th I think with a VTO as well um like me and carol discussed this before um i think it's like when you develop 
that's uh, when you really feel uh, it's going to happen, let's say the tick is going to happen and it keeps maybe repeatedly happening. I believe it's like I say, it is purely a panic response. Yeah. So when, when you're feeling that, it's like, for example, if I got a job being a chef and I'm working for, I maybe God Ramsey and um, <laughs> he's really shouting at me. Okay. And I'm making mistake. I made a mistake, and you shout me because of it. I'm going to keep making more mistakes because I feel really, really nervous, really, really nervous, and I keep doing it. This is similar to VTO. When you're going through the FFF response with this, when you're feeling the most anxious with this, um, that's when you keep, let's say, you can say with the chef doing a mistake, it's similar with the tick. Because when you do the tick and you feel real guilty of it, for example, you keep really heavily ruminating about it. You might see someone make a reaction, might look like a weird reaction. It might be like, why, you know, ooh, why do you look at me like that? It could be something completely different. They might be thinking of something else entirely. It might not be with you, but you believe that. You believe it's because of you. Um, and that's when a tick can keep happening. That's mm -hmm. when, when you feel that panicking situation, it escalates. It goes more and more and more. So, and that's when it feels more uncontrollable. And that's when that's when the anxiety builds up, the rumination builds up. Um, and then, like I said, unfortunately, some people, that's when that the consequence really does happen like it has with me, uh, where people do actually notice. Um, that's what I believe as well with BTO, like I say, it's more, like I say, I, like I, say, I think it's with heavily more on with the more general OCD than it could be with of more of the somatic features. Like I said, somatic features are there, but I believe it's more of the general OCD. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's everything I've got to say. But would you like to add to that, Carol? Um, well, I, I, I can identify what you've, what you've just said there again as well. You know, um, with it being more, I mean, okay, a, a somatic obsession is OCD anyway. Um, but with the VTO, it, it, for me, it feels like yeah, there is a somatic sensation. Um, but my obsessions and compulsions are more about my environment, for instance, or, or it, it, it did when it was bad. Um, you know, getting caught and called names. Will I lose my job? Dare I go out? You know, that kind of thing. Um, going back from, going on to the, um, you know, that was just talking about people uh, having an obsession with a vision. Um, so I was thinking, this is the same as the person focused on their breathing and worrying they won't cope if their breaths aren't even um, or if something could be medically wrong with them. So again, fearing the fact Fear in the worst is a consequence. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I'm separating the compulsion here um, to get to the somatic nature of the problem. Um, however, the compulsions are usually to prevent the consequence, which I've just said, really, you know, in the environment. Um, uh, for, for example, um, in this case, though, um, with the breathing, just like with the eyes. Yes. You know, repeatedly checking, like going to the doctor. Shit, that they're fine. Um, so you, you have the cycle um, of having an obsession with part of the body, fearing a possible consequence, increased anxiety and a compulsion to put it right. Yes. Yeah, yeah you said that really well, Carol. I, I totally agree with that. I was kind of felt a bit tied up in words there, but I, I think I've got the point across. Um, yeah. Because like you say with this as well, like with VTO, if you didn't know exactly what's going on when you didn't know what OCD was for example you would think is there actually something wrong with my eyes yeah. you would think that is there something medically wrong with my eyes why do they keep dying when I don't want them to have I like to say am I going cross-eyed um or are my eyes like say with reflexes for example why does have I got something wrong with an eye muscle is that why it keeps happening oh, yeah yeah uh, and that's where you could really believe that can go into a like I say with a somatic because then obviously it is a physical um part of the body with that like I say with the eye muscle you're thinking is it because of that and that's obviously when you go to the doctor and you can and then obviously you want that reassurance again that obviously you can say well no there's nothing wrong yeah. like with your eyes like I say with the eye muscles or anything I can see right now obviously that can physically be wrong with your eyes uh so you could do that for reassurance I suppose as well with that if that's right yeah because I've put um Recall that if VTO is a somatic obsession and the person thinks, what if the sensation means I have something wrong with my visual reflexes? And if I do, I might need medical treatment. And if I have to yeah. have treatment, I'm scared I could lose my sight if it goes wrong. So then you see the two consequences there to show it is a bodily obsession. 
That being so, the person would do the compulsions associated with the somatic obsession, such as repeatedly seeking reassurance, which we've really gone over. Kind of repeating yeah. it. Yeah, it's okay. No, it's good that yeah. everyone can get, like, say, we want to get all the points across so that we know that we are, like, say, making sure that everyone watching this understands what we're expressing with our opinions. Like, so we are advocates and we're just saying from our personal experience and what we have, like, say, researched as well. Um, this is what we believe. But yeah, I, I believe, like, what we've everything said, we can really, we've hit every point we can, haven't we, really, at the moment, I um, believe, with this. Unless you've got anything else to say, Carol? Um, just a little bit. Uh, so, you know, though not set in stone, the obsession associated with VTO doesn't usually have a bodily consequence. It may have, some people may have, you know, bodily consequence, like you were talking earlier, you know, about the eyes staying. Yeah. What, uh, they kind of had that yeah, just like, say, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm afraid that my eyes will be fixated on someone and I have to, like, say, dart my eyes to reassure myself that I know that I can still have control of my eyes. Yeah, and that's kind of what I've said here, such as worrying about the... Um, the premonitory edge and thinking something is wrong with the eyes or the brain and um, so instead the problem is usually how others perceive the individual and how they see themselves due to unwanted staring and that's how i used to be it was always worrying about what other people were thinking of me and how i actually perceive myself and um, so consequently as noted the compulsion will be to use avoidance and skip behaviors to prevent staring so just looking down but you're not kind of focusing on the eyes, it's just looking down and, and looking away, down. away from what's around you. Yeah, um, or you could like leave the situation so that you would like, you could stay in uh, your house all day, basically, for example, when yeah. no one's around and you're isolated. That would be your saving compulsion because you know that my big consequence is now impossible because there's no one around me. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, so if you, sorry, Carol, we've got something else to say, sorry. <laughs> so after everything we've said, um, overall, it seems VTO has a somatic has somatic features, and um, partly because it revolves around a bodily function, you know, the visual tics, and yes. the promontory edge, which, as we've seen, is a somatic sensation. Yes. More so, people with VTO may be hyper aware of their surroundings and self. And you talked about that when you're kind of hyper aware. Yeah, uh, like I said, you're peripheral with this as well. Like you are hyper aware of people around yeah. you. And I think that would contribute to involuntary staring and trying to control it through compulsive activity. So, in short, and from this discussion, some therapists might think it is fitting to call VTO a somatic obsession, while others might see it as having uh, somatic features. Um, but further research is needed to understand the mechanisms behind visual tics and subsequent obsessive compulsive components and to develop more effective interventions that address each aspect so it's on a parallel um like for now we've got exposure response prevention um that's the go-to therapy which i talk about in my book address staring ocd we'll come back to that um the book also discusses habit reversal training to address the tick um, and i thought about this um and then practiced it so that because i was thinking to myself there must be something for the tick alongside the ERP because I don't think the ERP actually addresses the tick by itself but that's from my experience yeah okay. yeah I so, totally understand as well with that Carol yeah I, I, I found that they worked well the techniques in their habit reversal training and um, as we've said before it involves using a competing response such as clenching, clenching the fists so it competes with a somatic sensation of Promonitory edge of, of the tick, and it helps people to suppress that tick until they're ready to uh, release it. And you can do it during exposure or any time. Yeah, like so you can clench your fist. You could even have like a stress ball, for example. Uh, it's not yeah. a compulsion. It's just like you say, it's to manage it so that you know that you are the one in the driving seat. You're the one who's basically yeah. saying that. I can, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to happen involuntary. You can then, you can, like I say, suppress it to a point where it can then be where it's safe to release it. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's as much as that. I, I think that I need to say, unless there's anything you need to say. Um, no, I believe that's it. I think we've touched on everything we possibly can at the moment. I mean, so we can always go back to this when we discover more research and we think, yeah. you know, what we can, we want to talk more. 
but otherwise not i'm uh, really happy with that and i hope everyone here has enjoyed watching thank you all so much we always appreciate you coming on and thank you for staying on throughout the entire video we absolutely appreciate that please like subscribe and share and also i will say again next that you can buy carol's book stress uh, address staring ocd on amazon and amazon kindle and her other books as well that she has published and also carol's website is uh, ocdwriter.com and also uh, if you want other resources i recommend the iocdf.org so thank you all so so much for joining we are the ocd visual advocates and we will all see you next time bye so see you later everyone